Hello, in this video, I am going to cover the flex property. So the flex utility, I'll provide a link to this so you can see more information about it, all the different ways to implement it on different screen sizes, you know, how to justify content. But I'm going to show you a simpler example. It allows you to, you know, affect the alignment, the specifics of the layout and, you know, of the columns, making it a bit more specific. So it's an extension of the CSS flex box and let's just implement a very simple div so let's say if i put a div here and let's say if we put a class of p-2 this is just formatting for now for bg-danger i'm going to put in the flexbox container or it will be soon if I reload that, that's what we get. Why if we want it so it only has enough to essentially, you know, contain the content? So what we can do is d dash inline dash flex. If I do that, that's only enough to contain the content. And because I've got some styling for the height with the p dash two, so that way the background isn't all the way along. So maybe we want it relative to what's in, in the actual content. That's it, there's like not much more to it than that. Like I said, I will provide a link to this. I could go over all of these classes, but you know, it's the pretty self-explanatory. These are the Flexbox and inline Flexbox ones. There's some direction ones right here. So how to position them based on, you know, left and right. There's also one how to justify them. Again, they're just very simple classes and they're just always on the left. They're always on the right, for example. It just ensures that you're essentially going almost beyond the column implementation system. And if you want something always in the middle, always in the right or always in between two elements, regardless of how big the space is, this works. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.